Hi, and welcome to another lesson of Master Everyday English. If you enjoy these lessons, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the lessons. In today's lessons, we're going to look at something that's really important, overcoming your fear of speaking to people in English. And we're going to look at a skill that is like so necessary for you to become more fluent in English and also have more confidence in your ability to speak English and to help you feel more relaxed, not feeling like you need to know the name of every single thing in English. From my experience working with English language students, working with adult English language students, what I find to be the most common problem that people tell me is that they just, when they're speaking, they just can't seem to find the words. So what's a common thing that happens? Is they're in a conversation with somebody, everything's going great, and then suddenly they forget the word. And so what's the first thing they do? Oh, hang on one second. Just let me, just let me, uh, I, I, I've got to just find the, the word here. Just give me one second, one second. And so, of course, then it's, they can't find the word. And of course, at that point, the conversation is sort of lost a little bit. So in this video, I'm going to give you some really good tips, basically to help you stop going to this and instead start using this. You're in a conversation and you get to a certain point where you want to say something but you don't know the word or you don't know the expression. What do you do? In many cases you freeze and you, and you stop talking. But there's a way around this that's a really useful skill to learn in English. Um, and it has a very big technical name in English. It's called circumlocution. It's a very big word for a very simple idea. The idea behind circumlocution is really that you use the words that you know to explain the words you don't know. Let's take, for example, a word which you probably know, but we're going to imagine that you don't know the word. Let's imagine you didn't know the word tablet. By tablet, I mean this. Now, if you didn't know the word tablet and you were in a conversation, how would you describe it? Well, you might say, oh, it's a, it's a kind of small computer. Uh, you might say, it's flat. You might say, it's similar or kind of like a, a, a telephone but a little bit bigger. You might say you, you hold it in your hand and you, you swipe with your finger. These are all good ways to explain the word you don't know the name of using very simple sentence structures. So of course you can use this to describe things. Of course that's where we use it a lot of the time is when we want to describe a thing we don't know the name of. But it doesn't have to be things, it can also be actions or activities. So we can describe not only nouns, but we can describe verbs and adjectives and adverbs. So let's take another example. Let's try and describe a verb. So this time we're going to try and describe the verb crawling. Crawling. Again, what is crawling? Well, this is crawling, right? If you wanted to describe... Now, maybe you wanted to talk about something. Of course, we can generalize about who does this. Well, of course, when we normally think about crawling, we often think about babies. So you might make an example and say, you know, the babies. And what do the babies do? The babies, you know, when they, when they move on their hands and their feet. Kind of like walking, but on your hands and your feet. Again, most people, if you're speaking to somebody who's a native English speaker, if, if you say, you know, kind of like walking, but on your hands and your feet, similar to babies, most people will know what you mean. They will know that you mean crawling. Now I'm going to give you a few useful expressions that will help you to do this circumlocution. 
we're trying to use sort of simple general terms that we know. We're trying to use our own vocabulary to describe something that we don't have in our own vocabulary. So some common expressions that we can use are it's sort of, it's a bit like, it's kind of, or it's a type of, it must be, or it could be, it's similar to, it looks like. You use it for... Okay, so hopefully now you've got the idea. Um, let's get some practice. You're gonna see some images or some pictures come up on the screen and what I want you to do is think about how would you describe these things if you didn't know the name. And actually some of these are kind of tricky, so I've tried to find some, some things that maybe are a little difficult and probably, you know, unless you're maybe quite an advanced um, English language learner, you might not know the names of these things. But think about it. How would you describe these things to another person? If you were describing them to an English native speaker, how could you describe these things? Have a go and then I'll give you my personal take. Of course, there are lots of different ways that you could describe these things, but I'll give you some of my ideas on how you could describe these things in a very simple way so that most English native speakers could understand what you were talking about. It's a kind of instrument. It could be used in rock music. It's a bit like a violin. It's a type of seafood. It's sort of small. It's a kind of pink or red color. They're similar to construction workers. They could make things in your house. They make things with wood. It's a bit like running. It's similar to a sport. You could do it in a park. It might be for fun and to stay healthy. Another great way to practice this skill is to play a game, right? And so I don't know if you know this game. It's like a very popular game, um, at least in, in the UK and in the US. It's called Taboo. And this game is, is basically a word game. It's a lot of fun. Um, and the basic idea is that you have a word and you have to describe the thing. Normally it's a thing, right? And you have to describe the thing, but you're not allowed to use certain other words. So as an example, if we take the word cow, right? Moo, cow, right? So let's imagine the word is cow, but you're not allowed to use the words milk, dairy, grass, and animal to describe a cow. That, that makes it a little bit more difficult, right? So how do you then describe a cow without using those four words? Well, you might say um, it has four legs, um, it's black and white, um, you can find it on a farm, it's very big, um, it makes something we drink. Um, obviously using these, these skills you can express yourself and describe something clearly enough to, uh, to make somebody understand what you're saying. Now, I'm terrible at taboo, so that might, you might not have got that that was a cow, but hopefully there was enough there 
for you to, to get an idea that I'm talking about some kind of animal, right? I'm going to put some taboo words up on the screen and some of the words that you can't use to describe the taboo word. Um, and so practice, have a go, see if you can describe the word. Maybe if there's someone else in the room with you or you have somebody that you practice English with, try this game. I promise you it's a really good game to help you improve your circumlocution skills and improve your ability to describe things you don't know the name of. Have a go. See if you can describe the word in the top of the box without using the other words. Okay, that's it for today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the lesson. Um, if you did enjoy the lesson, please uh, give me a thumbs up and click to subscribe. Also, please leave your comments with me as well. I'm really interested in any ideas you have for any future lessons, especially any of those skills you think you need to improve your everyday English.